for game two between the San Diego Padres and the Milwaukee Brewers. This is the continuation of a four game series. Melvin Upton was the hero last night behind James Shields. Upton went three for four, a double, a home run, two RBIs, scoring two runs as well, handing Jimmy Nelson a top loss. Jimmy Nelson strong over eight innings. The Brewers looking to snap a losing streak here tonight. Good evening, I'm Sophia Minert here at Miller Park. And yesterday the news was Scooter Jeanette coming back from the disabled list. And after the game last night, Craig Council announcing another roster move for the Brewers, this time affecting the bullpen. They have added Jan Mourinhas in a trade with the Tampa Bay Rays for cash and the corresponding move to designate reliever Michael Kirkman for assignment. It was just one inning for Kirkman here with the Brewers and Mourinhas in his time with the Rays had three relief appearances. Here's what Craig Council said about how he will fit into the bullpen plans moving forward. You know, he's, he's been around, he's experienced, he's, he's kind of seen it all. Um, and we think he's getting better. Um, you know, he's got a really good arm. He's, he'll be 94, 95, and um, good, good sink on his fastball and, and, and a good slider. So he'll just, um, you know, there's there'll be innings for him, and we'll we'll kind of, um, you know, see how it see how it evolves. But um, you'd like to have him evolve into something, you know, impactful. But for now, you kind of use him into something. Marini is with the team and available tonight and also today a significant step for reliever Will Smith as he continues to work back from a right knee sprain. Since spring training he threw off the mound for the first time today. 25 pitches for him in the bullpen had a chance to catch up with Will Smith after his throwing session said he felt great started off 60 to 70 percent was able to go 100 percent by the end. So he is hopeful that the return is coming sooner rather than later for Will Smith. They would love to get his arm back in a bullpen that has been great for the crew here lately. When we come back, it'll be Matt LaPay and Bill Schroeder. They'll take a look at Junior Guerra as he gets ready to make his third start for the crew. We're getting close to the first pitch here at Miller Park. We'll tell you more when we come back.
Nothing is brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. By your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. And by Miller Lite, the original light pilsner. Cheers, it's Miller time. Game two of this series, Brewers and Padres and Christian Friedrich on the mound for San Diego. Junior Guerra getting the call, his third start since joining the Brewers here in Milwaukee. Good evening from Miller Park alongside Bill Schroeder. I'm Matt LaPay, Sophia Minard, our reporter. Interesting matchup, maybe for some different reasons as opposed to last night where you had the Shields-Nelson matchup. Junior Guerra, though, he's been impressive. The, the mid-90s fastball gets everybody's attention, but there's one other pitch that's been really good for him so Yeah, far. before I get into that, I mean, it's talking about impressive. Nice job uh, filling in for B.A. This is it for you. It's an emotional while, moment, right? Yeah. yeah, it's an emotional moment. I can't so. look at you in the eye. I'm going to weep. <laughs> but good job, buddy. We'll see you in, uh, after the All Star break. But right. yeah, Junior Guerra has been very impressive. I mean, he came up. He's throwing hard, 95 miles an hour. But this is his out pitch. That split change. He's got nine strikeouts so far this year. Seven of them coming on that split change. Now, when you throw 95, 96, and you can throw this in and around the zone, particularly down in the zone with two strikes, you're going to get the strikeout. Catch is going to be busy when you throw it right down in the zone, but uh, it's a lot of hard stuff for Junior Garrett. Sixty percent fastball. The splitter has been a big pitch for him, and he'll mix in a curveball every now and again just to show it maybe early in the count and keep a left-hander, you know, off it. But uh, you know, the splitter, the fastball, great pitches for Junior Garrett, and he's been pretty impressive. One and zero, he's been able to throw six innings in each of his two starts. Yeah, this Brewers rotation's been pretty good of late. Junior Guerra looking to keep that going tonight. Brewers looking to even this series. Game two of the four-game set, the Brewers and the San Diego Padres, and we'll get it going right after this on Fox Sports Wisconsin. Brewers baseball on Fox Sports Wisconsin presented by Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. Spend the night with luxury. Roof closed. Baseball as scheduled as always here at Miller Park. Second game of the series. The Brewers and the San Diego Padres as Junior Guerra getting his third start here with the crew. Yeah, he's been pretty good his first two starts. Able to go six innings in each of those starts. Four runs in. Both of his uh, outings so far, but uh, you know, it's six earned run average, a bit deceiving. He's thrown better than that. Really has with the win, and he starts tonight with a strike to John Jay, and we are underway here in Milwaukee. 
As the Padres a winner last night, three nothing. A ground ball that is bobbled by Carter, and now a foot race to the bag that he will not win. Was he going to feed it? Was he going to try to take it himself? And the Padres get a base runner to begin the night. Yeah, not the way you want to start. And uh, you know, Chris Carter has been solid defensively. He got the bobble, and once he did that, kind of just flip it over to Guerra, who was there, and and just not able to. You know, win the foot race to first base. Man, not a good start defensively for the crew. Well, an error to begin the game is John Jay, a leadoff base runner here for San Diego. The Padres, we mentioned a 3 0 winner last night. Their pitching has been just lights out good going back to the second game of their split double header a couple of evenings ago at Wrigley Field. Back to back shutouts and then some and the Brewers turning to Junior Guerra here tonight as Alexei Ramirez steps in and shortstop in the two hole tonight in the Padres batting order. And himself a good night last night. Two hit nights. RBI coming on a sacrifice fly. Jimmy Nelson pitched very well for Milwaukee. James Shields just a little bit better. Allowing the Padres to have their first three game winning streak of this season. Pretty good change up for James Shields last night. When you think about it, the last two days for the Brewers, they faced some pretty good off speed stuff. You know, with Chen in Miami with the change up, Shields at last night. You're not going to see so much of that tonight with Friedrich on the mound for the Padres. A ball is strike. Junior Guerra against Alexei Ramirez. John Jay leading off the night. But Reaching on an error as Ramirez fouls it back. We mentioned his starting pitching for the Brewers. It really has been better. Now they're not going to all qualify as quality starts, but I think you could call them stabilizing starts. And it began with Guerra in Cincinnati. Yeah, you know, Davies uh, had a pretty good start in Miami. You know, Julie Peralta is starting to make strides into getting deep into games, and you know, his slider's coming back. Ball two strikes to the shortstop for San Diego as Guerra keeps an eye on John Jay. It's a Padres team that is 16 and 20 now under first year manager Andy Green, who watched his team get blanked in his first three games. They've been shut out eight times this season, but now it's the Padres shutting out the opponents in each of the last two as Ramirez just does get a piece. Yeah, their starting pitching is very good. I mean, they rank amongst league leaders in starters earned run average to the Padres. And Shields is up there. He's 312. Drew Pomerantz, the left hander, he's got a 180 earned run average. So, uh, you know, they've got some guys that can throw the baseball. And they have to because the Padres don't score many runs. No, they don't. They're the bottom of the National League. Pitching the last 14 games, about a two and a half ERA is Ramirez with a fly ball back into right field. Lots of room for Domingo Santana for the first out of the game. Let's check out that Padres batting order presented by Potawatomi. We have seen Jay and Ramirez already. Matt Kemp is next up. Brett Wallace is the cleanup hitter. Melvin Upton Jr., big night last night. Christian Bethencourt behind the plate. Jose Perella, Adam Rosales in. Christian Friedrich rounding out the Padres batting order tonight. And here is Matt Kemp, who had a quiet series opener. Hitless in four trips, but certainly still has that power in his game. Veteran, right fielder for San Diego. So one out, one on as we get things rolling here at Miller Park tonight. Third time around now for Junior Guerra, the 31 year old from Venezuela. A yeah, good slider to start him out. That's what we were talking about when he come on the air. Once in a while, he will throw that early in the count to get a quick strike and a good breaking ball catches the catches the plate getting ahead. Oh and one to Matt Kemp. Quickly out in front, two strikes and nothing. Guerra's story, I think by this point, at least reasonably well documented. Originally signed with the Atlanta Braves back in 2001, began his pro career as an outfielder slash catcher. Didn't start pitching until 06. 
You say he bounced around is putting it mildly. He has bounced all over the world and back here in the States some time in the Independent League. But has worked his way back up to big league baseball and Kemp with a liner to the left and Ryan Braun has it measured and there are two away. Now let's check out the Menards Brewers defense for tonight. You got Braun Flores and Santana in the outfield. Ramon Flores, the only left handed bat in the starting lineup for Craig Council tonight. Perez, VR, Hill and Carter in the infield, and Lucroy once again behind home plate. And Aaron Perez making start number six at third base. Talked a lot about his hitting, which has been impressive, and so has his fielding. So back in there tonight for the crew. As they will swing that infield as you see right there that's Aaron Hill and shallow right for Brett Wallace the cleanup hitter playing his more natural position of first base tonight they're playing a lot at third for the Padres this season but for the third time this year getting a starting call over at first tough night last night 0 for 4 three strikeouts in the game and with the Padres managed seven hits in winning three nothing in the opener. Yeah, it was the Melvin Upton show last night for the Padres. I mean Jimmy Nelson pretty much controlled everybody else in the lineup but and Melvin Upton with a big contract able to provide all the run support that James Shields needed last night. Single double and a homer. For Melvin Upton Junior. Is on deck for San Diego. A ball is strike to Brett Wallace. Jay led off the inning, reaching on an error. But Guerra retired Ramirez on a fly to right and Kemp on a liner to left. A one one pitch. Out in front, there's that split change. The ball, two strikes. I mean, it's a dandy. I mean, he throws it. Yeah, you know, when he throws it over the confines of the plate and keeps it down in the zone, you know, knees and below, he's going to get swings more times than not. It's when, you know, they're off the plate or they're up in the strike zone. That's when they're not nearly as effective. So Guerra ahead of Brett Wallace, a ball, two strikes. Laz Diaz, by the way, calling the balls and strikes tonight. Now we'll see if Garrett can put him away. Brett Wallace, the hitter, and the one-two is taken downstairs. Jimmy's been getting a heavy dose of third base. The Padres have had a ton of injuries in their infield and adding to that although not on the disabled list but Derek Norris the catcher got hit by a pitch in the second inning last night and came out Christian Bethencourt played the rest of that game last evening and is back in there tonight for San Diego. Two balls two strikes to Wallace with the runner on the move and the pitch is taken and it's an uncontested Steal there for John Jay. So a runner in scoring position, a full count to Wallace. Yeah, and with the shift, Hernan Perez had to bust it over to third base because nobody was there. And John Jay not thinking about doing that with two outs. Another element of the shift. Yeah. You know that defenses have to be aware of. Guerra ready to deliver the 3 2 pitch, and runners are now at first and second as he loses Brett Wallace. And the other thing with a man at second base, I mean, Perez has to stay relatively close to third. He can't really shift. And you know, with a man at second, and just walk into third base. You see, Perez, as soon as you know, he took off after the pitch got to Lucroy, he went over to third base. Nobody even close. Both the Brewers and the Padres teams that will shift a lot, especially relative to what they had done in the past, probably more so with San Diego under first year manager Andy Green. We'll hear more about it throughout the course of the weekend in this series, but Green is a teammate of Craig Council's for a couple of years with the Diamondbacks and picked up a few pointers 
on that very topic from just watching Council. You know, Sophia will have more on that in Blue's Live pregame here coming up this weekend. It's pretty interesting. A couple yeah. of young, good managers. Yeah, here. yeah, and learning on the job. And uh, Andy Green is a guy that has to be relatively creative offensively because Padres don't have a lot of home run power. They don't score a lot of runs. Elvin Upton Jr. with a ground ball to third. That's Perez, and that's the inning. So a threat, but Junior Guerra pitches his way through, and the Brewers coming up at the bottom of the first. Top half of the first inning, and now the Brewers will get their first crack at it here tonight. Let's check out the Brewers batting order presented by Potawatomi. Domingo Santana at the top, followed by Jonathan VR and Ryan Braun. Jonathan Lucroy is cleaned up, followed by Chris Carter and Aaron Hill. Seven or seven through nine. Aaron on Perez, Ramon Flores, and Junior Guerra against Christian Friedrich, just up from Triple A. Yeah, Friedrich hasn't made a start in the major league since 2012. So up for the minor leagues where he did make four starts in two different levels in the minor leagues for the Padres. Uh, his career 19 starts a 5 and 16 record. And making start number three against Milwaukee. And you talked about it in Brewers live pregame he was involved in a, a rather bizarre play that we'll chat about as we move along here Domingo Santana leading things off. Brewers trying to get that extra base hit back into the arsenal. This is a team that certainly has the power potential, not just homers, but to get doubles. But it's been about two and a half games now since the Brewers have had anything beyond a single. The last 18 hits have been singles for the crew. And Santana will have himself a base hit to left, and that's how the bottom of the first begins for Milwaukee. Well, let's check out the Menards defense for the San Diego Padres. You got Upton Jane, Kemp in the outfield. Pretty athletic out there. These guys can hit a little bit. And as many problems as they've had with injuries in that infield kind of makeshift. They lead the National League in double plays. They've turned 42 of them. And Brett Wallace making start number three at first base. A leadoff single for Domingo Santana. And here is Jonathan VR. Use his ability show to show his ability to get on base at a couple of more hits last night. And continue to say it because the gap hasn't changed. He has only been kept off the bases in four of his games so far this season. He's reached in 29 out of 33 after last night's two hit performance. He's been good. I mean, to say the least. I mean, he's been a a bright spot in the offense. He's done a very good job defensively. He steals bases. Brings a lot of energy to the lineup, does Jonathan VR. Showing bunt and now pulls back and takes outside. 
Those are the Brewers. A uh, lot of singles here against some very good pitching, we might add, with James Shields last night, Wei and Chen on Wednesday. Yeah, that has a lot to do with it. Yes, <laughs> there's no question. Yeah, those guys uh, pitched pretty well. And Aaron Hill double. And the 10 run outing on Tuesday it was in the sixth inning. It's the last extra base hit. So, having gotten that out of the way, look for a lot of doubles and homers tonight. For right. Council's team. That's why he said it. Exactly. That taken care of and move on. And there's a four pitch walk. And the Brewers get their first two aboard a single from Santana, a walk to Jonathan VR. And here is Ryan Braun. He takes a 12 game hitting streak into this game. He's been letting it rip during that streak. Check out the average in the run production with 10 RBIs, the 431 average. And very unlike Ryan Braun, he's been pulling a lot of his base hits. I mean, normally Ryan Braun is going to be a guy that's going to right field a lot. You see a lot of these hits that you're seeing in the center field and the left. And right now, you know, feeling healthy, the back, the thumb is feeling pretty good. Guys are trying to jam him, but he's been able to get the bat head out. And that's why you see him pulling the baseball. The Brewers getting something going against. Christian Friedrich here in the first inning knocked him around pretty good a couple of years ago when he was with the Rockies trying to do that tonight now the roster is certainly a little different now for the Brewers than it was a couple of years back but Friedrich up and down he's battled a lot of injuries in the course of his career 28 year old yeah, elbow back problems and uh, Ryan Braun three for six career against Friedrich oh and one the count. Chopper foul over at third. Well, he had a couple of opportunities last night. An unusual night for him not delivering in that situation. His batting average with runners in scoring position very, very good, as you see. No, that was all about James Shields last night. I mean, he was dialed in and really working hard to get Ryan Braun out. A lot of change ups, never made a mistake with one. Friedrich out in front, two strikes and nothing. Bounces up there to Christian Bethencourt. Yeah, there was an at bat that Ryan had last night against Shields. Eight consecutive changeups. And every one of them around the knees are, are lower. Tried to wait back, sometimes just can't. That was a heck of a pitching performance by that guy last night. Yeah, he won for the second time in seven decisions, but that ERA. Has been good throughout run support or lack of it. That's why that record isn't reversed. It easily could be. One two to Braun. And that's a good take. Yeah, that's about the best fastball you're going to see from Friedrich. 93 that time. He's he'll cut the fastball. He'll throw a slider, change up. Relies on command, not overpowering, and doesn't have near the change up that the Brewers have seen last couple of nights. Two balls, two strikes. Friedrich versus Ryan Braun. Santana let off with a single. He's at second. VR walked. He's the runner at first. And the count is full on the Brewers left fielder. Jonathan Lucroy waiting on deck. Big Chris Carter next. Carter trying to snap out of what really is the first slump of the season could say for him. Braun trying to keep the line moving here in inning number one. Here's the payoff to right field and this will carry out a play. Not a very cow tonight here partner. Huh? Oh, yeah. Your farewell game for a couple of months. Yeah, it's just it's such an emotional moment for all of you, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, did you get this guy out of here? No, <laughs> good job. I mean, it was a lot of fun yeah. working with you. We'll see you what after the All-Star break. After the All-Star break, all yes. Right. Good yep. job. Appreciate it. This telecast will get significantly better <laughs> tomorrow night. Brian Anderson is back. Kicking back. Focused in, I'm sure. Here's Braun with a fly ball hit back into right field. Matt Kemp 
near the line will make the catch. The runners tag and both will advance. And it just missed it. Just got under it a little bit, or that would have been a big fly to right for Ryan Braun. And both runners able to advance. Two guys in scoring position now. Well, if you make it out, you know, try to advance base runners. Fastball from Friedrich. And this isn't a good sign. Having a discussion on the mound, not sure what it's about. Darren Balsley, who's been a pitching coach for the Padres for 13 years. Pretty good one, too. And a conversation three batters into the game. That is a quick trip to the mound. Christian Friedrich getting an early visit from his pitching coach. Yeah. Wow. Runners at second and third. I thought for a second that they were coming out, maybe something wrong with them. That's an early visit in the first inning. He was a big time prospect. It was Friedrich, a first round selection by the Rockies in 2008. Made his debut four years later in a start against the Padres for the Rockies. Here's Jonathan Lucroy. RBI chance for Luke who looks at a curveball. Padres kept him hitless last night. The Brewers in that game managed eight hits, stranded six. They were 0 for 4 with runners in scoring position. One 0 pitch. Fastball high. Padres pitching staff has gone 23 straight innings without allowing a run. And they're, and they're conceding one here. They got the infield back. Two balls, no strikes. And Friedrich struggling here in the first. He's already walked VR and he is 3 0 on Lucroy. Well, maybe the discussion with his pitching coach was, you know, be careful with Lucroy. It's okay if you load the bases. And although you got uh, Chris Carter, who's due big time on the on deck circle. You figure with him, it is absolutely win and not if. Snaps out of it. You mentioned that the uh, Padres lead the league in double play, so maybe they're thinking about maybe setting up a double play opportunity. And Lucroy swinging 3 0 and will go out of play. Early chance here for the Brewers. Last night that was the case. And stranded VR at third. And on Wednesday night, the series finale against the uh, Marlins. Left a couple of runners on in the first inning. Trying to turn that around here tonight and get the early jump. Three balls, one strike to Jonathan Lucroy. And the bases are loaded. Second walk already given up by Friedrich. A huge opportunity coming up now for the big man, the first baseman for the Brewers, Chris Carter. Well, it was almost as if that was by design. I mean, even the 3 0 pitch that Luke Roy swung at was up in the zone, might have been out of the strike zone. Looking to set up the double play, and Chris Carter has other ideas. He is old for his last 17. That's why we're saying he's due. Pretty good time to bust out of it right now with the bases loaded in the opening inning. And there is a very high fly ball in a shallow center field. That's John Jay. Santana tagging. Catch is made. Here comes Santana. The throw is cut off. And out at third is VR. You yeah, had the run counts though. Yes. Yeah, good hustle by Santana to throw it into third base, and it was pretty close. Laz Diaz, the home plate umpire, saying that Santana crossed home plate before the out was made. But it was very close. 
I think V are expecting to throw to go to home plate and you can see clearly I think that uh, the run's going to count. And that will be the case. So the run is in the inning is over so the Brewers are first on the board. We are through one it's one nothing no walk. First fly by Chris Carter. They now have a one to nothing lead and Jimmy Nelson took his third loss of the season last night. But in what Craig Council said was the best and deepest outing by one of his starters this season. It was eight innings for Nelson gave up just two runs on five hits had five strikeouts as well. And Council said that you know you want a guy like Nelson who can go deep into a game. And he said the great ones separate themselves because you feel that every time they're on the mound they can almost win it by themselves. And so he said Nelson can get to that point. They're trying to get him deeper into games. They've had mixed results with it. But last night was a time where uh, it made sense for him. He was very efficient with the uh, the slider mixing in a lot of off speed stuff and very pleased with Nelson last night. Jimmy said he had his best change up of the year. I mean you can imagine if he's going to be able to master that pitch get that going. He's he'll go from a two pitch pitcher going into spring training last year to a four pitch pitcher and Jimmy Nelson not only physically but he does the work between starts to prepare himself each and every time out there and and that's what it takes to be a top of the rotation guy in this league. I mean it's not just go out there every five days and give it your best. You have to prepare and that's what he does so well. Christian Betancourt with a ground ball to short VR retires Betancourt and there's out number one here in the second inning. And Craig Council has talked about that quite a bit with Nelson to your point Rock is that how locked in this this guy is in between starts just very locked into the routine the work between the starts what he does to get ready for the next one which, which is already started for Nelson right now and it's, uh, very serious minded about his work and well, that's the way the great ones are really when you think about it I mean. He's not at the great level but he's uh, really starting to become a very consistent you know right handed starter for the Brewers a guy you can rely on and and certainly with that eight innings yesterday he had five strikeouts and that's not a bad thing there's nothing wrong with getting you know that two seam fastball getting out early in the count that'll keep you around a while. Terrific control that was just uh, a good pitching duel. Between Nelson and James Shields. Junior Guerra his second inning of work now against Jose Perella second baseman Guerra getting out of a little first inning difficulty stranding a couple of Padres. Morella waves at it and does not get it two and two the count man fastball off the plate and he just uh, 
I was you didn't see that very well and now splitter time for junior Guerra. Let's see if he goes to it. And here is that 2 2. There it is. That's a strikeout. And the first of the night for Junior Guerra. Two outs here in the second. Yeah, 10 strikeouts for him this year. And eight of them coming on that pitch right there. The split change. You uncalled a splitter. It's a split change. And Lucroy, you know, able to catch it in the heel of the glove. I mean, it moves really well, goes down, and Lucroy had a little problem with it. And Perella had more problems with it. So two men out in the second inning, and here is Adam Rosales. Starting over at third tonight for San Diego. Padres have won nine of their last 14. And three straight for the first time. In a very crowded National League West. Are four games under 500, but just two and a half out of first. That's how bunched it is here in the middle of May. A ball of strike, Guerra versus Rosales with two outs and the base is empty. Make it one and two. We'll get you that mid 90s fastball. I haven't seen it yet tonight. You know, 94 is at least what I've seen, 94 the best he's thrown, but he can get it up there at 96. That's 94 it. with a fastball. He's throwing a couple of breaking balls at 83. See what the splitters coming up here. 2-2. Two, two. It was not in the pitches upstairs. So a full count now to Adam Rosales with the pitcher on deck. He has gone six innings in each of his first two starts for the Brewers. Third time up now for Junior Guerra. And here comes the payoff. And there's the second walk given up by Guerra. They went up to Wallace in the first. Imagine the bunched standings that make up the NL West. Andy Green's team is two and a half behind the Dodgers and the Giants. That's how jumbled it is right here on May 13th. I mean, a little disappointing start for the Diamondbacks, I would say. I think that they thought they were going to be able to get out of the gates pretty well. They got Zach Granke. I mean, pretty good offense and you know, a little slow coming out of uh, spring training. And Shelby Miller. That's a big acquisition. As they look like a franchise that's all in. But you're right to start not what they were hoping for or expecting. It's Christian Friedrich. Now steps in pitcher versus pitcher and the count is even a ball to strike. Adam Rosales the runner at first throwing a two out walk. And a liner that's right to Chris Carter. Pitcher hit it well but Carter was right there. That does it for the Padres bottom of the second one nothing no walk.
help you out a little bit. Check this out from a couple of years ago. Bases loaded, a wild pitch, and all this happened. Yeah, one run in, two runs in, and uh, the Brewers weren't done yet. Friedrich gets the baseball over by the on deck circle. He's got his head down. Look at McHenry, the catcher. He's not even looking, and Gene Segura steals another run. So three <laughs> runs on a wild pitch, and that could have been easily a pass ball. Apparently, you know, Michael McHenry, and I'm, you know, that, that's who was catching that particular game. It must have hurt himself somehow because. He was down wasn't looking Friedrich wasn't looking and Gene Segura was always looking to take another base. Able to score easily. Oh crazy play wild. Bases clearing wild pitch. There is Aaron Hill leading off the second inning. I guess it's good to be known for something right. Exactly. Five days later the Brewers beat up on Friedrich again. Four innings pitch. Brewers got nine hits off of them and five runs, all of which were earned. In that outing, you saw the clip from. He gave up nine runs, but five were unearned. Here's the one-one to Hill. And that is ripped, but foul. Yeah, Friedrich has bounced between the rotation and the bullpen, you know, throughout his career, and uh, last year spent. With the Colorado Rockies all out of the bullpen, 68 games and a 420 or 525 earned run average. And far and away the most appearances he's ever had in the major leagues. Now getting a spot start for the Padres. A ball two strikes the count to Aaron Hill. Hill back over there at second tonight. Scooter Jeanette in the lineup last night. Left handed starter here tonight. Hill getting the call. Well, that 10 game hitting streak snapped a couple of nights ago. Yeah. Well, and he said as much in that hot streak on the road trip. He said, you know what? I'm not going to stay hot like this for long. It's a game of averages. And if you have that mentality, don't get, you know, too worked up over the, the lulls when you're not swinging the bat well, not getting hits. Right. Yeah, that streak ended. I said a couple of nights ago it was last night. But what a productive stretch it was, and no night more productive than last Saturday in Cincinnati with the three homers, including the tenth inning grand slam. He's seen a lot in his time in the big leagues. He knows the drill. Here's the two-two pitch, and there's a ground ball over to short. That's Ramirez. One out. Hey, tomorrow night, partner, the Brewers and Padres square off at 6 o'clock after the game. Platinum selling pop artist Andy Grammer will take the stage to perform a free postgame concert. Presented by Pick and Save. Tickets and field passes are available at Brewers.com slash concert. Yes, sir. You and BA. Yeah. You will be here. I'll be down at the uh, postgame set. Be working. Perfect uh, angle. Outstanding. Yep. Good multitask. Recap the game, watch the concert. DA will be making pre and post game appearances with you. Think, right here's mm -hmm. Bernard Perez, shallow right field. That's Matt Kemp, and that's the second out of the inning. And when BA comes back, we're going to work him like a horse. <laughs> he's going to start right there. And he's going to start there before the game, <laughs> just like me. Run back. This is, he's going to run with me. He could probably outrun me. I know that. <laughs> Now, good to have him back. I mean, it was great to have you in the booth and uh, always have a, a good time with it. Third year that we work together. It is. For some reason they keep asking me back. Not sure why. Here's Ramon Flores. Two outs and the base is empty. But OBA doing great work um, in a variety of sports. Most recently, the NBA playoffs. He had one really good game after the other, kind of like his work in the NCAA tournament. Yeah. Ball is strike to Flores. Christian Friedrich. Second inning of work here for San Diego. He gets this opportunity. Andrew Kashner now on the 15 day disabled list. A few days ago, he was the projected starter for tonight, and they were going to bump him to tomorrow. 
But a hamstring injury has Kashner on the 15-day yeah. DL. And a little bit of a hit to the starting rotation. Here comes the one-two. Flores shoots that one foul out of play. See that average for Flores, but he had a, a stretch there. A couple of pinch hit opportunities where he was reaching, getting on base. Trying to inch that average back up slowly but surely. Yep, the only left hander in the lineup tonight for Craig Council. You got Newen Heist, Presley, Jeanette. Three left handers sitting this one out. You're well, going to say the one two, but that was part of the book on Friedrich, too, especially out of the bullpen. He could be that lefty on lefty guy. The splits would suggest that. So, hence the right handed heavy lineup that Craig Council has going for him tonight. His team playing with the lead. The last week or so, that has not been the case in that road trip, especially in Cincinnati where they got a split. They weren't ahead long, but they were ahead when it mattered on Saturday and Sunday. And Craig Counts are really a thinking man's manager. You know, he gave his team an opportunity to kind of take a little bit of a break today. You know, Report time was five o'clock and you know it, it wasn't yesterday. It's always the second day after you get in late in the city where you kind of feel sluggish. Craig Council knows that he hadn't been that long since his, his playing days and and decided to give his guys a little bit of a break today. A little comebacker that Friedrich handles the Brewers retired in order. We are through two. It's one nothing Milwaukee. It is brought to you by QP and Abraham, 1 800 800 5678. QP and Abraham, tell them you mean business. Two innings down here at Miller Park. The Brewers have the early lead, 1 0. Sacked by Chris Carter in the first, opening the scoring here tonight. So far, so good for Junior Guerra in his third start for the crew. One and no record, six innings of work in each of his first two, and has allowed just a couple of walks. John Jay, who will lead off this inning, began the game reaching on an error. That has been it so far for San Diego. Jay, first pitch swinging, fouls it back. It's been good at the leadoff spot for San Diego. Average. 281 coming into the game, but one of the top five among leadoff hitters in the National League and hits. 
Good years at the plate in his time with the St. Louis Cardinals involved in the Jed Jerko trade in the offseason. He battled injuries the last couple of years, but uh, he's always done well against Milwaukee. This comes up with those big hits. He was left field very well and really made a nice smart play in the first inning. Almost cost the Brewers a run instead of going home, went to third and got VR. But Santana never slowed down, a good thing. And Jay turns on one, and that's in the right field, a base hit. There's the first hit of the night for the Padres, and the second time Jay has reached. They've got something off speed. I think it was a split. And left it up. When you leave it upstairs, it becomes very hittable. And John Jay able to barrel it up and line it into right. You don't want to leave those split changes up in the zone. They don't dip, they don't drop, and they become hittable. Lead off single for San Diego. Here's Alexi Ramirez. He flied to right in the first inning. Jay with one stolen base so far this season. We see the numbers for Ramirez. Won a couple of silver sluggers in his time with the White Sox. 34 year old. Signed with the Sox back in 2008. Garrett trying to keep this string of effective starts going. He, by definition, does not have a quality start, but it's been effective in his first couple of outings for the Brewers. They've had a good run here that began with. Junior in his last outing against the Reds, they have gone through the rotation, getting some pretty good work. And last night, very good work from Jimmy Nelson. Zach Davies had a five-inning outing in uh, Miami, but it was good. Yeah. Did what he needed to do, a, a continued step in the right direction for him. That's two straight good efforts from Davies. And the struggles of this starting rotation, much talked about, but maybe showing signs of uh, turning a corner and. Improving things. 2-0 pitch to Alexi Ramirez, a fastball in there for strike one. Yeah, not that six innings out of a starter is your ultimate goal, but I mean that's a minimum that you have to get on a you know, on a regular basis, you know, throughout the season to keep your bullpen alive. That means if you're getting six innings at least, you're you're in the game. And you know, Junior Guerin, his first two starts, six innings, four runs in, in both. Yeah, that's the key. Just give your team a chance. Is this Brewers bullpen? You know, there was a, a hiccup last night, but really, it's it's been going back to the road trip. It's been very good from all corners of it, not just the Thornburg, Blazik, Jeffress group, but Boyer and Torres. They down the line, they they've been turning in some good efforts. So hopefully for this Brewers team that can continue and then the offense can get back on track as well. Ramirez with a foul ball out of play. They had the 10 run outing on Tuesday in Miami. But again we go back part of it is who you faced. You get a Fernandez on a Monday night. Terrific young talent for the Miami Marlins. Wei and Chen James Shields last night. That's the big leagues though. It is. I mean you're going to get those guys. You're going to get a. Some pretty good starting pitching uh, on Tuesday here at Miller Park. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Cubs come in. There's a one hopper VR. There's Hill for one on the first, and that's a double play. Six, four, three, VR, Hill to Carter, two outs, bases empty. Yeah, got in on the hands that time. A good fastball. It uh, seemed like it was tailing in. And Jonathan V are able to play the hop, get a good feed over to Aaron Hill, and turn the double play. So beating the Padres at their own game. Padres turn a lot of double plays. Brewers able to turn one. And the Padres don't hit into many double plays. Our team that will strike out a lot. They're not an explosive team, but this man at the plate can be Matt Kemp. And 
Going after the first pitch and sends one into center field. Should be routine for Ramon Flores, and it is. Leadoff single, a race by a double play. Five ball ends the half inning. One nothing, no walk. For the third inning here at Miller Park. A stream, the Brewers on the go. Stop by the Fox Sports Go booth tomorrow when the Brewers take on the Padres. Download the app and get a free prize. Visit FoxSportsWisconsin.com and click on Upcoming Events for details. 9 1 and 2 in the order for Milwaukee, Garris, Santana, and VR. Last night the pitcher hit eighth. Just the makeup of the lineup. First time that Council had gone that route since April 22nd. But makeup of tonight's lineup has Guerra hitting ninth, and then you swing it back up to Santana and VR. Yeah, with the right hand you get Scooter Jeanette in the number two hole, and you got VR down. That's why he likes to use VR in the ninth spot. With Scooter out of the lineup, you now VR hitting second. Jeanette had a couple of hits and a walk last night his first game back off the disabled list and that oblique tightness which became an issue during batting practice in that Tuesday night series opener at frigid Wrigley Field back in there last night and looked like he didn't skip a beat swinging a good bat here's Junior Guerra back up the middle and a base hit for the pitcher Junior Guerra. Wait, is that his first? That would be his first. First major league hit. Clean single in the center field. Well, good for him. He had had a total of four big league plate appearances. And see, the they're going to mess with him yeah, here. Well, no, Laz Diaz <laughs> put the ball. I mean, they gave Laz Diaz the ball. The Brewers wanted it back. Diaz put it in his pouch. <laughs> so who's to say that's the right one? <laughs> Come on, Laz. <laughs> Games people play. Here's Domingo Santana. I'm sure it was. That was the one. <laughs> Seen some uh, pretty good hitting pitchers throughout baseball here in the last few days or a week or so. Yeah. Syndergaard with two homers. Yeah. His Padres staff was a part of it. James Shields, who was so good last night, he gave up the homer in his previous start to Bartolo Colon. A ball is strike to Santana. He's singled and has scored the only run here so far. A little bloop into right field. That will drop a base hit. Garrett a second and the first two on for Milwaukee here in the bottom of the third. I guess James Shields is going to be forever known as the, the guy that gave up that home run. He's like Al Downing giving up 
Hank's uh, home run. <laughs> Not quite that impressive, but yep, he did it. Bartolo Colon took him deep. Yeah, that was the uh, the power of bad timing, I guess, from the Brewers' perspective, because that's the first team that Shields faced after that outing. So uh, a little a little payback. Or at least personal redemption there as he uh, won his second decision of the season, two and five. There's Jonathan VR. He walked in the first inning. Threat here for the crew against Christian Friedrich. Signed with the Padres organization back on March 3rd. Ball in there to VR. Yeah, VR hitting 317 as a right handed batter before tonight's game. Including that one home run you see is from the right side of the plate. Two on, nobody out, bottom of the third. VR showing bunt but taking. Gets on base. So often a threat. Leads the National League with 11 steals. The pitcher Guerra, the runner at second. Santana at first. Break even pitch. And VR lays one down. Friedrich throwing in time. Well, that was a good play by the pitcher as VR dropping one down the third base line. Yes, it was. That was a dandy of a play by Friedrich who. For a left handed pitcher a little bit easier to get off to the third base side of the field because he falls off in that direction. But a nice athletic play. And VR, I thought he th he thought he had a base hit. That was a beautiful bunt. Maybe a little bit too much in fair ground, but Friedrich was able to jump on it and make a good throw to first. But he gets a sacrifice. We're going to go ahead and walk Ryan Braun here with runners at second and third. It's the reaction that you would expect from the home crowd, but an opportunity now with the bases loaded coming up for Jonathan Lucroy as they go through the process here with Ryan Braun. And playing the percentages and uh, they're figuring that they're going to set up the double play and maybe get out of the inning. They got a double play in the first, but not the conventional fashion. You know, the sack fly from Chris Carter and then VR looking to advance after Santana had scored and were able to cut down VR at third. Ryan Braun taking the intentional walk, which brings us to our carsuit.com trivia question for tonight. He's the last Brewer player to have a hitting streak of 20 games or more. He's the last Brewers player to have a hitting streak of 20 games or more. And has a 12 game run going right now. Might be him. Question is hitting streak. Brawny with that intentional walk has an on base streak now of 23 games. Our question is hitting streak. Here's Jonathan Lucroy with the bases loaded. One out here in the third. Takes a look at strike one. You don't get that kind of reaction out of Lucroy very often. Yeah, right at the bottom of the zone. Chance here for the Brewers to break through. One nothing lead in the third against the left hander Christian Friedrich, and Lucroy pops this out of play. Thirteen RBIs here for Lucroy this season. This is what he has done with the bases loaded. Have not played long ball since Sunday in Cincinnati. 
Had 11 home runs in that four game series against the Reds. Nothing in the bigger ballpark in Miami and kept off the board completely last night. Friedrich with a two strike pitch. I think Craig Cowns would be happy with a double right now. Last extra base hit for the Brewers was Tuesday night in the sixth inning. Aaron Hill two run double. Last 19 hits have been singles for Milwaukee. 3rd comes the one two curve is chopped foul. Oops just trying to grind away at these at bats he's obviously not swinging a bat like we're used to seeing and that's a process you just got to grind through it sooner or later you're going to you know pick it pick up a pitch and it's all over with then you're right back to where you want to be looking for a mistake. We'll see if Friedrich can make one here he's ahead in the count of ball two strikes. And a little chopper at third. That's Rosales play at the plate. They'll get the force there. Bases remain loaded, but they cut down Guerra at the plate, and there are two men out. Yeah, they really the only play he had on that uh, that slow roller coming in. There's no way they turn two, so he gets the out at home. And Friedrich gave it to get it on Lucroy's hands and not hitting it all that well, so he goes home and not a very good throw, but he gets the out at home plate. No question in his mind when that ball was hit what he was going to do with it. Well, the bases remain loaded for Chris Carter. Sacrifice fly in the first. It's the game's only run. Chance for a big fly here. Ten homers for Carter. The last one coming eight days ago in Cincinnati. Friedrich with a 1 0. Let's check out the Powerball home run leaderboard. Carter, as we mentioned, leads the way with 10. Ryan Braun next up with seven. Then you have Jeanette and Hill, both with four. We have Brewers stuck on 39 home runs as a team for a while now. Can you say 40, Chris Carter? Let's find out. 2 0 the count. Just foul at third. We've seen him hit some screamers that have left the park. It's like a matter of a second or two. We have seen a couple of flies that at some point is going to break something in this ballpark. <laughs> bust a chair, bust a window, a couple just, of lights, maybe. Yeah, he has that ability. 2 1. Good cut there, straight back. Here maybe, goes. Maybe get Bernie ducking up there in the dugout. Why not. But as you said a, a double would be fine too. Yeah. If you're Craig Council you'll take that. Two balls two strikes. Chris Carter with the bases jammed here in the third. Curve swung on and missed. Friedrich doing a nice job of getting out of trouble. Bases loaded with one out. The Brewers do not score. One nothing. No one.
Well, Padres at Miller Park. There's greater coverage of baseball brought to you by T Mobile. How about these Red Sox? They're, they're hitting just a little bit. Doing something that hasn't been done in more than a decade. 11 runs plus in four straight. Clayton Kershaw was spinning it for the Dodgers again last night against the New York Mets. And Matt Holliday with a halfway decent night, helping the Cardinals beat the Angels 12 to 10. Slugfest. That matchup. Hey, you see the Red Sox hitting 295 as a team. Yeah, that's that's ridiculous. We're we're at that point now where you know it's the middle of May. Right. You know you, you can get some crazy numbers early, but you know, about a month and a half into the season, first team with uh, more than 200 runs scored already. 207 coming into play tonight. Pretty good. Yeah, not not bad at all. That's a, Serious offense going on. Four, five, and six hitters here for San Diego in the fourth. Brett Wallace leading things off. Red Sox and Astros 5-5 five, five in the sixth inning now. Cardinals play the Dodgers later tonight. Cubs this afternoon defeated the Pirates 9-4. Jason Hamill now 5-0. Ball two strikes to Wallace. Again, so far so good for Junior Guerra. He's given up just a hit through the first three innings. A hit coming from John Jay, and he was quickly erased on a double play ball. Yeah, 50 pitches, uh, not too bad going into the fourth inning. That out against Cincinnati, which he went six, the pitch count reached 94. The winning decision came in his first start. That was against the Angels. Wallace with a hard grounder, and that's scooped up by Chris Carter, and that's out number one. Did have an error to begin the game, but he continues to yeah, be good. Yeah, be far more on the plus side than the minus side with his work defensively over at first. And that was a concern. And uh, you know the Brewers uh, worked hard with him in spring training. Craig Council did not take for granted or discount the value of good defense at first base. Melvin Upton with a fly ball to Domingo Santana for the second out of the inning. Yeah, those are the kind of bad bats that'll keep that pitch count down, those one pitch outs. You hear it all the time and it makes sense. I mean, if you're a prolific strikeout type of pitcher, that's great. But if not, I mean, you know, just let them you know pitch to contact, whatever you want to call it. Right. Try to keep that pitch count within reason. And it's working here so far for Junior. Gara, here's Chris, uh, Christian Bethencourt, the catcher. Now, the other part of that is, I mean, how many hitters do you see in the big leagues swing at the first strike? <laughs> not many. I mean, yeah, there aren't too anymore. many first ball, fastball guys anymore. You know, Melvin Upton's one of them, and, you know, Matt Kemp swung at the first pitch for the final out in the third. Bethencourt with a bouncing ball to Jonathan VR. Nice clean inning. For Junior Guerra, they get out one, two, three. It stays one nothing crew in the fourth.
Back at Miller Park, the Brewers holding on to a one to nothing lead over the San Diego Padres. Game two of this four game series and it's Friday the 13th, but some fans here at Miller Park got some good luck by a surprise visit by Brewers rookie infielder Colin Walsh. So Colin Walsh spent some time roaming the Miller Park concourse and well, if you thought you were sitting somewhere, you're going to be sitting up. All right. Better seats now, thanks to Colin Walsh. She upgraded fans with their tickets, handed out some gifts, some autographed baseball, some concession vouchers, just enhancing the fan experience here at Miller Park. So a nice gesture by Colin Walsh and the Brewers, just uh, making sure everybody has a good time here on a Friday night at the game. All right, Sophia, thanks. It's always fun to watch the reactions yeah. of people, right? right? Ripping up my tickets? Yeah. <laughs> you go from the terrace level to the field level, that's a pretty good deal. That is a great deal. Nice. That's fun. Brewers do a good job of getting people in the ballpark. They really do. They work hard at it. And some fans very happy here tonight. Aaron Hill leads things off going after the first pitch. Yeah, that uh, that player fan connection has always been a big important part of what Mark Adonazio, Debbie Adonazio, you know, wanted to bring to the community when they bought the ball club, and they certainly have done that. It's fun to watch. Now, I'll tell you this, you know, Rock, I was telling you this off air, and I'm not saying this with any great agenda here, but, you know, as I see the other ballparks, it just makes me appreciate Miller Park yeah. even more. I mean, there are some great, great ballparks out there in the big leagues, but when you come here and you know there's going to be a game and you have the, the, all the tailgating space here, and the fans take advantage of that opportunity, and you come in here, and this is one fan friendly yard. See that having a chance now to, to get a look at a lot of the other parks. I know, yeah, I know yeah. a lot of fans get that on their vacation. They'll visit a lot of other parks across the big leagues. But and look at the crowd here tonight. Yeah, this is it's I good. Mean, not only do you have a great facility, we got great fan support. Aaron Hill with a bouncing ball foul. And I'm not trying to get brownie points here. I have a gig, so I just want, want to get that qualified out there. But this is really a, this is a nice, nice place. I agree with yeah. you, but yeah. I am trying to get brownie points. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Rock no, really loves no, Miller I Park. Believe it. I mean, I've been here a long, long time, and uh, I tell you, fans are great here. It's a great place to watch a game, and you always get a good deal here at Miller Park. Yeah. The state's blessed with a lot of great facilities. Cross for football and basketball here at Miller Park. Great venue for the Brewers. And Brewers baseball once again. The full count to Aaron Hill. Moving off the bottom of the fourth for Milwaukee. And a swing and a miss. And Christian Friedrich looking pretty effective here so far for the Padres. Hey, speaking of uh, trying to get people to ballpark, the Brewers get set for a divisional showdown with the rivals from the Windy City as the Cubs come to Miller Park next Tuesday to Thursday. Reserve your spot today at Brewers.com. Always fun in here when the Cubs and Brewers hook up. We yeah, got to get uh, Brewers fans in here. Know the Cubs are going to be traveling well this year, the way they're playing. Yes, sir. A winner today after being swept in that split double header on Wednesday by San Diego. It was the first time the Cubs had lost consecutive games all season. Zernot Perez. Swing and a miss. Yeah, Friedrich seems to be getting better as this game's going on. I mean, back to back strikeouts. He got Carter with the bases loaded and struck out Aaron Hill in a fastball down the middle. Story, an interesting one this season alone, talking about Friedrich. Waived in February, was claimed by the Angels, and then returned when the Angels claimed there was an undisclosed medical issue. And the Rockies ended up releasing him, and then the Padres signed him on March 3rd. And so he's had some health issues, uh, including stress fracture in his lower back that caused him to miss almost the entire season in 2013. His whole career, he spent a lot of time on the disabled list, except for last year. 68 appearances out of the bullpen.
career record of five and sixteen. Three two pitch Perez with a chopper over to third that's Adam Rosales two men out. Good pitching last night, and we're seeing more of it here in this game so far. I mentioned Friedrich in that career record of his. Also, keep this in mind each of his last 10 decisions have been losing ones. Last win four years ago against the Phillies. Here's Ramon Flores. He's had a good curveball tonight. He really he has. I mean, curveball, slider, change up. He's mixing his fastball pretty well. Missing that time. The count evens a ball of strike. Flores bounced back to the pitcher to end the second inning. It's a one, two, three inning for Friedrich, and he's trying to do the same here in the fourth. Only run coming in the first on a sack fly off the bat of Chris Carter. Back up the middle and through a base hit. And Friedrich nearly got picked off by that liner. Two out single for Flores. Yeah, I think he was ready to uh, scream in pain, but the ball never hit him. He's able to get out of the way somehow. But boy, nice approach by Ramon Flores hanging right in there. That fastball, maybe cutter that stayed out over the plate. And you saw Betancourt reach out over the part of the plate and just missed the arm, able to get out of the way. And if nothing else, you clear the pitcher as you start the fifth inning. Guerra got his first big league hit his last trip, swinging away here, and there's a ground ball over to Jose Perella, and that'll do it for Milwaukee in the fourth. They leave him in. We are through four. It's still one nothing, Bruce. Be standing behind the base, uh, up behind second base, never making Sports Center, never making the highlight real play, but always where the ball was hit. So I finally started asking him, like, "Hey, what are you doing?" Because I've never seen anybody move that much, and shifting wasn't happening at all at this point in time. And uh, we start talking about counts, what guys are trying to do, and we start talking about hitters and understanding swings and pitches, and it all made sense to me very intuitively. And he's a very smart guy, can communicate well. And, so picked that up from him and then started kind of building my own philosophy off of that. But he was the introduction to it for sure. And that's Andy Green talking about his former teammates at council with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Just interesting uh, about how both teams uh, adjust their defenses. And Craig Council doesn't particularly like the word shift, but we'll use it here for the purpose of this conversation. Both teams do it a lot. They will move their infielders around a lot. 
as we begin the fifth inning. Yep, and most of the time it works. Every now and again, you're going to see uh, you know a hitter beat the shift and get a base hit, but not all that often. When you compare that to how many base hits that shift or that moving around in the infield takes away, it's uh, far and away been a better deal. You can see uh, the shift, see Houston Astros number one, and then the Brewers and the Padres on that list. It's a number that throughout baseball is expected to jump significantly, and it's already gone up a lot in these last few years, and it may even yep. go up more this season. We get get more on on the topic tomorrow on Brewers Live pregame. Sophia Menard putting together a report on that, just uh, what Green has learned. His time with his time with council, you got a piece of it there. Jose Perella here leading off for San Diego, but it's it's a fascinating part of the yeah. game. And shift is you know, by definition is you know three guys on one side of the field. I mean you always see guys move around you know one way or another, but uh, for the purposes of that graphic, you know three players on one side of second base. Yeah, you'll hear that referred to as the Ted Williams shift. Uh, if if it's two and a third is shaded, you, you could. Uh, See the term partial shift, but but yeah, the uh, the graphics that's that's the Williams shift, the three men on either the left or the right side of the bag at second. So good. Now I know one thing we're talking about tomorrow in the pregame show. I better start uh, studying up. Man, you are. How do you know that? You are like Iron Man material. No, I, I'm I'm doing a pregame. Yeah. I don't know that. How'd you know that? <laughs> that people. They do. They let me you? know. Yeah, Man, I'm telling did. you. They they know that I can only handle so much at any given time, so I'd imagine at some point I'm going to find out about that. <laughs> They'll fill you in, get yeah. somebody to yeah. kind of help you out. <laughs> two balls, two strikes to Jose Perella, and he hits this one well. Going back is Ramon Flores, has it lined up, and at the track will make the catch. And the second baseman put a charge into that one about midway on the warning track out there for. Ramon Flores he's saying nothing to it and playing relatively you know shallow not real deep and makes a good route on that baseball and able to haul it in no problem took a peek of the wall knew where he was and made the catch so one away in the fifth for Adam Rosales. Seven, eight, and nine hitters in this San Diego order against Junior Guerra. And this is well hit the left field. Ryan Braun will watch this bang off the wall and on his way into second. And diving in there is Rosales. How about that? Knocked his helmet right off. And it turns into his fourth double of the season. And Brony played that one nice. He knew he wasn't going to be able to get there. Played the carom off the fence out there and left. And Made a good throw into second base, but that was a mistake by Guerra. Fastball right down the middle. Zalas teed off on that one, but Brawny made it close at second base. Watch the tag by Hill. Boom. That's a pretty good slide. I thought he got the helmet. Never did. Flew off first. Here's Friedrich. He lined to Carter with Friedrich, his first at bat in the second inning. Here out in front, 0 and 2. First extra base hit of the night. Double from Rosales. Second hit for San Diego. And it bounces up there. Rosales on the move. The Lucroy throw is not in time. Bounced up there on Lucroy and Rosales being aggressive. And yeah. get the third. Pretty good anticipation right there. Always looking to take that extra base. That's what the Padres do. And Lucroy not able to keep it close enough, and Rosales with a really good jump able to get the third base. Yeah, breaking ball that uh, Lucroy had on a short hop and just a bit late. It's 
So a runner at third with one out a ball two strikes to Christian Friedrich. Infield in and a strikeout for Junior Guerra as he takes care of his counterpart for the second out of the inning. Big punch out right there. Lineup will turn over. John Jay. Mentioned Ryan Braun and how good he has been with runners in scoring position, but no one is better in the big leagues in these situations than the man you're looking at here, John Jay. 520 is average with runners in scoring position. Rosales is the runner at third. We have 520 overall, but with two outs, he's hitting 300. Still pretty good. Pitch. Garrett tries the fastball but misses. And you just wonder if you're going to be a little bit careful with John Jay, knowing how good he's been in these spots, and you know, go after Ramirez. Jay's average at 284. He singled to right his last trip in the third inning. And yeah, that appears to be the case. Yeah. A little early in the game to be walking guys and uh, bringing other hitters to the plate, but you know Ramirez is a right-hander, and John Jay's been uh, pretty good in these spots, as you uh, as you said. Three balls, no strikes. That's in there. Thirty one years old now John Jay. Six years with the St. Louis Cardinals before coming over in that offseason trade to the Padres. And he's trying to lay one down third base line but will roll foul. Wow. And trying that on a three one pitch How about that. Oh boy. Yeah, they are uh, that it's part of the book maybe not that exact situation but you mentioned it rock Andy Green he. Loves to be aggressive, trying to find ways to manufacture runs. That was a little outside the box there. Yeah, maybe one and zero, oh, maybe even you know two and one. But uh, you know a three-one count with a man at third base and two outs, you would figure that John Jay would be swinging away. He did that on his own. Three balls, two strikes. Here comes the payoff. And it goes off of Guerra, but Hill is there, and that'll do it as the Padres threat is turned back. A runner left at third. Brewers maintain this one run lead as the Brewers will send the top of the order Santana, VR, and Ryan Braun as we move to the bottom of the fifth with the Brewers leading the Padres one to nothing.
Second game of the series here in Milwaukee. In this summer, some of the biggest names in soccer converge on the United States for the 100th anniversary of one of the world's biggest tournaments. Coverage of the Copa America Centenario begins June 3rd across the networks of Fox Sports. Top of the order for Milwaukee, Domingo Santana. Two for two, singles to left and right, and he has scored the game's only run. Two for two, representing tonight's at the plate, presented by Blaze Pizza. Slow curve drops in there, or does not actually, upstairs, two balls, no strikes. Fastball away, and it's now three and nothing to Santana. Brewers are run on four hits. They have stranded five. 0 2 and 0 for San Diego. Lost his hat. That was a uh, Carlos Gomez hack right there on a 3 0 sure, count. It sure was. <laughs> and Santana usually pretty well under control, but uh, he looked to hit that one in Lake Michigan. Sneaky fastball that uh, Friedrich seems to have tonight. I mean, I think all the off-speed stuff, you know, the change-ups, that you know, the curveball has been a real good pitch for him tonight. And I think the Brewers have been just a tick behind that fastball, which it, it seems to be pretty straight. I'm not sure if he's hiding it well or not, and he's been pretty effective tonight. Yeah, curveball mid 70s range. Could cross you up as Santana draws a walk to lead off the fifth. Yeah, fourth walk for Friedrich. And here's Jonathan VR. Talking about his work. He's a shortstop here, and among shortstops, what he has done offensively, the stolen bases, that leads everybody in the National League. But you check out the on base percentage, the ability to get the extra base hits with the doubles and the runs scored. He's right up there among the shortstops in a number of offensive categories. Yeah, and doing a heck of a job out there at shortstop, too. I mean, good arm, good soft hands, and has uh, been a nice addition to that infield. You really didn't know a whole lot about him coming into spring training, but uh, you saw very quickly that he was a pretty good defender. And I guess he'd be classified as a nice surprise offensively so far. Yeah, and it, you know, it's something worth mentioning again. It was a tough situation for him in uh, in Houston. No one who is in line to play that position. And the Brewers have a prospect of uh, much uh, anticipation among fans, and not to mention the organization in Orlando Arcia. He's off to a great start in AAA, hitting over 300. The yard. Turning in uh, some pretty good performances here in this first month of the month and a half of the season. A ball is strike. Santana, the runner at first. A walk and a sacrifice bunts for VR so far tonight. One one and that gets through Bethencourt and that will allow Santana to advance. That might be a pass ball. I'm not sure if that hit the ground or not, but uh, that was right through the wickets. It looked like. No well, ground and glove just about the same time. Not sure how they're going to score it, but certainly one that catcher's got to be able to catch or at least keep close. There's a break. It will be a passed ball. So Santana in scoring position. A two and one count to Jonathan VR. Curve is fouled out of play. Yeah, got to shoot it to the right side and get Santana some way over to third base with less than two outs with Ryan Braun coming up.
We talk about manufacturing runs. Certainly a chance to do that here. As Bronny waits on deck. A two and two count to VR. This has popped up. And there will be no play right in front of the Brewers dugout. Yeah, good hustle over there by Pettencourt. Wow, he got over there quickly. Talk about the athlete that he is. Demonstrates that here. Watch how quick he gets off his haunches once he finds a baseball, and that's pretty good speed with all that catcher's gear. Going into the opposing dugout area, you get no help. No. Stays two and two to VR. Count runs full. Yeah, back in the old days, they didn't have those screens, those railings and screens in front of the dugout. I remember sliding into. You know the Yankees dug out of Yankee Stadium. Guys kicking stuff on you. <laughs> they weren't there to catch you. John no Candelaria yeah. stepping on you. <laughs> not only do you not get help, but just the opposite. Like being at the bottom of a pile in a football game. Right. right? Just yep. kind of rugby you know, scrum. In that extra shot. Payoff pitch and VR will send another one out of play. Extended at bat here. VR versus Christian Friedrich. Yeah, I'll never forget that. Eighth pitch of the at bat coming up. And did he go? No. And it's a walk. A couple of walks here in the fifth inning. Good job by Jonathan VR. Able to hold up on that high fastball, and they're forced now to. Pitch to Ryan Braun. Here comes Brawny, and we revisit our carsuit.com trivia question. Who was the last Brewers player to have a hitting streak of 20 games or more? And there's your answer. 23 game run. As you look at some of the big time hitting streaks, of course, Paul Molitor at the head of that pack. Dave May back in 73. Cecil Cooper, Corey Hart with 22 game runs. Ryan Braun out to left field, and that is Upton Jr. for the outs. Everybody stays put. Runners at first and second, one out here in the fifth. Yeah, I think that Ryan was up there looking for that off-speed pitch, that, that slider, whatever it is. There you see it, and I think it may be a changeup, something off-speed, because he doesn't normally swing at the first pitch unless he hits a rope somewhere right off the end of the bat on the changeup. And an easy out into left field. Here's Jonathan Lucroy. Put into a fielder's choice in the third after walking his first time at the plate. Third inning of fielder's choice, a play at the plate. Cut off Junior Guerra. Lucroy with a fly ball hit back into right center field. And that will be Matt Kemp on the catch. Runners tag and moving to third will be Santana as VR holds first. Runners at the corners with two men out. And Brewers still trying to find that big hit. They just can't find it. Can't get it. In the last few days. See if Chris Carter can end that stretch. Last 23 hits the Brewers have had have been singles. They have a couple of walks here in the fifth inning. Carter with the game's only RBI, a sack fly in the first. Went down swinging in the third. And there's a ground ball to Ramirez. 
Another chance is missed here for Milwaukee, and we are through five, still one nothing Brewers. As we head to the sixth, and this weekend the Brewers are celebrating Major League Baseball's first annual Play Ball Weekend, presented by Chevrolet. It's a league-wide effort to engage young baseball fans and celebrate the continued support of youth participation in both baseball and softball. So earlier today there was a press conference and player clinic at Brown Street Academy. The Brewers also donated bat and ball sets to all kindergarten to fifth grade, first and second graders through the, throughout the Milwaukee public school system, along with books. So Chris Carter, Chris Capuano, Alex Presley, Will Smith, all part of, of that event at Brown Street Academy today. All right, Sophia, thanks. Yeah, it's fun just to see, uh, when we talked about it before, the interaction with uh, fans of all ages here at the ballpark and trying to get the young kids involved in this sport. Here's Alexi Ramirez leading off in the sixth inning and a quick fly ball to Ryan Braun for out number one. Yeah, not only is that a Brewers initiative, but that's a Major League Baseball initiative. Not only kids, uh, you know, but inner city kids, you know, getting involved in baseball, getting them out to the ballpark, and that's important for the the health of this game. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with a pickup baseball game now and then too. Right. The organized leagues are great, understand it, but just get a group together, many as you can, and get out to a park. Get the kids into it. No better way than to get the players out and, and visit. Yeah, it's fun. Here is Matt Kemp. Padres with only a couple of hits now as we move to the sixth inning. Another effective Outing so far here for Junior Guerra. Matt Kemp in this series is hitless. He was 0 for 4 last night. Man, pitch count real good for Guerra, 74. Bounces one up there to Lucroy. Kemp with eight homers on the season. He has driven in 25. That 39 homer a year back in 2011 with the Dodgers. Dove in 126. Both of those numbers led the National League. Two time All Star that season as well as 2012. Yeah, had some injuries in his latter days with the Dodgers and production went down. Moved on to San Diego. Part of that trade in December of 2014. It involved Yasmani Grandal as well. The one two is roped but foul and out of play. At Dodger Stadium, a tough ballpark to hit home runs. Petco Park. That's a tough division unless you're in Colorado. <laughs> and that was the remedy for the Padres when they lost their first three games, getting shut out in each of those three. They went into Colorado and 
The first two games of the series against the Rockies scored a total of 29 runs. Kemp a swing and a miss. Luke Roy applying the tag. Two up, two down in the sixth. And we want to send our best wishes out to Mike O'Driscoll. Big Brewer fan, big baseball fan, period. Uh, in the hospital right now. I want to wish him uh, all the best. Yeah, the brother of uh, Tim O'Driscoll, the, uh, the very good official scorer here at Miller Park. We're thinking about you, Mike. Absolutely. All the best from all of us here in the Brewers broadcast crew to you. Red Wallace at the plate. He walked in the first, grounded to Chris Carter in the fourth. Even the count. Well, Garrett trying to make the most of this long awaited opportunity. Last year, got his feet wet in the big leagues as a reliever. Just a total of three appearances for the White Sox. Now he's making his third start for the Brewers. And one more out, he's able to get through the sixth inning once again. and. Would not be surprised unless they pinch hit for him in the bottom of this inning for then he might go out again. Pitcher's spot two up fourth in the bottom of the sixth. A ball two strikes to Brett Wallace. Here it comes. See that, especially that fourth inning, very efficient and trying to make this an efficient inning as well. 11th pitch of this frame coming up, and it's the final one. Got him swinging. Back to back punch outs for Junior Guerra. So he continues to pitch well. That split change takes care of Brett Wallace still. Continuing to pitch well, and his catcher acknowledging him as tonight's cricket something to smile about. Not only is he pitching well, he's swinging a bat. His first big league hit with single in the third inning. First in the big leagues for Junior Guerra. And doing a great job out there in the mound. Speaking of crickets, that was the Padres offense with Junior Guerra out there. Crickets offensively. <laughs> that means nothing. Gotcha. Quiet. <laughs> Good. Got the message. That's an impressive line. Yeah, two hits. Well, we'll see if the Brewers can add a little padding here. Christian Friedrich. 
His Padres debut is uh, pitching pretty well in his own right. He's given up just four hits in the one run through the first five innings. Yeah, his effectiveness with the curveball has made his fastball that much better tonight. If he's not able to throw that curveball for strikes or get swings. I mean, guys are going to sit on that 92 mile an hour fastball and hit the ball hard, but that hasn't been the case. Brewers have had to keep that curveball in the back of their minds because it's been good. An effective curveball will certainly slow the bats down. A ball, two strikes to Hill, followed by Perez and Flores in the bottom of the sixth inning. Hill looking for his first hit in this series. Hitting streak snap last night. He's 0 for 3 and has grounded to short and has struck out so far this evening. In a pitcher's kind of series now, at least through the first game and a half. Here comes the 1 2. There's that curveball again. Friedrich Benz, a very highly regarded, was you know, a very popular publication. Baseball America six years ago had him as the overall 33rd best prospect in the game. He was a first round selection in 08 by the Rockies. Started 16 times in his big league debut season of 2012. One two. And that's out of play. At 16 starts, not a lot of innings. Part of the philosophy at the time is you know, get him out there, but they weren't concerned with uh, going deep in the ball games. It was 84 and two thirds. That was his total at a five and eight record that season. And the injury started to hit, knocked him out in 2013. And that was about the time that the. the uh Colorado Rockies pitching had the philosophy of you know, piggybacking. They weren't you were catch pitching five innings and maybe the next time out they they'd pick up the starting pitcher and it was kind of a very interesting way about trying to keep innings down, but it didn't work. They went back to the more conventional way and pitching every fifth day, and keeping an eye on pitch counts regardless. 2014 it was mostly working out of the pen he had just three starts that year and we've mentioned it and we'll tell you again last year with the Rockies it was all out of the bullpen all 68 appearances last two years in the big leagues he had a combined record of 0 and 8 and not pitching like it tonight though no he is not. Pitch number 91 of the night coming and pitch number 10. In this matchup with Aaron Hill. 3 2. And Hill works him for a walk. Yeah, fifth walk issued by Friedrich to go along with four hits. There's your definition of grinding out an at bat or grinding out a plate appearance in this case right. for Aaron Hill. And that uh, last pitch didn't miss by a whole lot. Former Brewer Carlos Villanueva getting up in that bullpen. Last night they went too deep into the bullpen. Did San Diego? It's a curveball offered up to Perez for a foul ball. 0-1 count. Relievers last night were Brandon Maurer and Ryan Buchter, who the latter of which uh, earning a save for the first time as a big leaguer. Fernando Rodney was not available last night. He had worked both ends of that split doubleheader in Chicago on Wednesday. And hopefully not needed tonight because the Brewers have the lead. And let's see if they can extend it here. An 0 1 count to Hernan Perez. Trying to lay one down, but. 
foul ball. Yeah, they've had their chances, a number of them tonight, but just haven't been able to cash in with that big hit. 0 for 6 runners in scoring position. But they did get a sack fly out of Chris Carter. Red Council looking for his team to try to bust loose. They had that 10 run game on Tuesday in Miami. But more often than, than not, from Monday on, they have faced some excellent pitching. Tonight may be a less likely source for that, but Friedrich has been good. Two strikes and nothing to Ernan Perez. Pinch hit roll last night. It's 0 for 2 so far tonight. The 1 2. And he gets Perez for out number one. Hey, that brings us to tonight's Tavern of the Game winner, Jandis Barr in Luxembourg. Luxembourg between Lake Michigan and Green Bay. But you knew that, Matt. If they call the Brewers by 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, they get 40 tickets to a Friday night game in the Miller Lite beer pen. This offer, courtesy of the Tavern League of Wisconsin and Miller Lite. You are Mr. Wisconsin. I mean, you just, you know, where all these, all these towns are. I mean, it just, at the snap of a finger. And since this is my last game, where is it again? The name of that bar again? In Luxembourg? Let's start checking these places out. Jan is in Luxembourg. Because you're Luxembourg. not going to be working much late next uh, uh, month or so. You are correct. Is that what you're saying? So, yeah, I might have to start touring some of these taverns. Yeah. If you can pass along a list of maybe your favorite 10 or 12. Top but, 100? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I got a busy off season coming up. <laughs> Yeah. Got some great taverns in this town. Yeah. The Tavern sure League of Wisconsin. You know, it's an I mean, fourth roll. They, yeah. They, you know, they're going to they let me warn me here. Yeah, you know? we're, we're laid back. This is. You know, calls from the mothership. I'm a short timer. I don't really care. Got a thin set tie up. Yeah, you know, loosen it up. I've had fun. Appreciate you uh, tolerating. Uh, the fill in here for the last month or so. It'll be a coming back tomorrow. It's You're been, pro, uh, man. been fun, man. Yep. Been fun, and uh, it'll be a coming back. We've had a lot of great partners, and you're one of them. Checks in the mail. <laughs> one and two to Flores. Breaking ball away. Well, B.A. coming back, you can expect probably a walk-off tomorrow. All those uh, basketball games, both college and in the NBA, he's had some classics. Yeah, walk-off so, in the 17th. Yeah. But <laughs> 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 oh, that would be great. That'll get him back, right? <laughs> Flores with a ground ball and a diving stop by Perella, and he'll get the play at first. Nice play. Second out of the inning is moving to second is Aaron Hill. They've been pretty good out there at second base. They're missing their second baseman, their third baseman, but still they are able to turn the double plays. Pretty athletic play by Perella, who was able to make that play in the hole. He also took Flores deep into center field. Had a good jump on it, and from his knees, able to get the out. Former Yankee. Rated the offseason from New York. When we talk about that disabled list as the Padres have a meeting on the mound. They're without infielders such as young Hervis Salarte. Others out include uh, Janelle Weeks, Mickey's brother, Alexi Amarista. And they have really been banged up. And yeah. while not on the DL, their catcher, starting catcher from last night, Derek Norris, was hit by a pitch and left the game an inning and a half in. Junior. And actually added another catcher to the roster today, Hector Sanchez. 
The night is done for Junior Guerra. Here is Colin Walsh, pinch hitting opportunity with Aaron Hill, the runner at second and two outs. He's looking for his first hit from the right side. He is 0 for 9. But he has drawn six walks from the right side of the plate. It remains the ongoing story, but he knows it better than anybody. You know, the, the story of the low average, the high on base percentage, but he knows it's now time to start getting that batting average up. And man, what a great opportunity this is for him to do it. Yeah, you got to start hitting. That's what it's all about. 1 1. Former Stanford Cardinal. Rule five pick. Let's see where they're working them. Yeah, didn't like that last call, but it looked like it might have been pretty close. A ball, two strikes. Walsh pinch hitting for Junior Guerra. Worked six innings of two hit shutout baseball for the crew. Friedrich with a one two. It really is interesting given the, the low average that he has, that he has worked the walks that he has. Let's see how Friedrich deals with him 2 2. They try to get him to chase a curveball out of the strikeouts he's had this year have been looking. Brewers would probably like to see him a little bit more aggressive with two strikes. Pinch hitting has been often talked about here. The, the one Brewer who has had success in the role has been Alex Presley, who's three for six, including a three run homer or a home run I should say he has driven in as a pinch hitter in all with the three hits he has driven in three two and two the count and a full count on Colin Walsh. Friedrich has allowed just four hits. Now the payoff. And Walsh will force another offering. He stands up there very patient at the plate, not wanting to commit to his swing too early and you know able to fight off that fastball that was pretty much right down the middle of the plate. Friedrich has got away with a lot of those pitches tonight, uh, getting a lot of the plate with a fastball. Again the three two and he got him swinging out in front and the inning is over change up gets Walsh and the Brewers strand another runner still one nothing Milwaukee.
the seventh now and we check in our Brewers minor league report on outfielder Keon Broxton you see he's on a 12 game hitting streak that averaged nearly 400 five home runs for him. How about tonight he's already got two home runs three RBIs the Sky Sox are leading that game and uh, this season he's off to a great start 23 games in Colorado that 326 average so Keon Broxton was sent down uh, to get that back going and he has certainly done that for the Sky Sox. Yeah yet you would think Sophia that this guy has the makings of being a really exciting player and Yadiel Rivera is sent down they're trying to get him some regular at bats as well and hopefully similar results. Michael, Michael Blazik now on for Milwaukee. Yeah 17th appearance Blazik a 281 earned run average 12 punch outs 10 walks and 16 innings of work. We'll face Melvin Upton Jr. And Blazik last pitched on Wednesday against the Marlins in Miami, a scoreless inning. And looking for that bullpen to continue to do what it has been doing here over the last several games. Over the last seven, that pen has pitched to a 171 ERA. Catches the corner at 94 of all two strikes to Melvin Upton Jr. And it's been all of them that have pitched well. You know, back into the bullpen, the first wave out of the bullpen after a short start, they've all been very good. And that was Jeremy Jeffress you just saw getting himself stretched out. But you're right, everybody you're looking at there has had a role. And a good one. Yep. Tyler Thornburg with a lead is probably going to be next up. Two two pitch. Upton fouls it off. Yeah, more good news uh, concerning that bullpen. Will Smith a little throwing off the mound. He looked very encouraged after he was done. Had a big smile on his face, feeling good about. What he'd been able to accomplish, boy, that'd be a big shot in the arm to get Smith back. 2 2 pitch. And did not go. Manny Gonzalez, the first base umpire. Full count to Melvin Upton Jr. here in the seventh inning. One run game. And this is hit in the air to right field. Santana. No play. Is it? It is a foul ball up against the pads. Long run there for Domingo. Ran out of room. Man, that's the way it's done these days. You go as hard as you can, then slide. And not only do you are you able to run a little bit harder further but you're able to get down a little bit lower and maybe be able to catch that baseball but it bounced off the pad and almost got a piece of them on the carom. Full count still to Melvin Upton Jr. Struck him out swinging. Out number one gets him on a curveball to begin the seventh. And three consecutive strikeouts now uh, between Junior Guerra and Michael Blazik. And in a pretty important part of the lineup, Kent Wallace and Upton, three consecutive punch outs on the curveball. Wasn't that good of a curveball, but it fooled Upton thinking he was going to get a heater. One out here in the seventh. Well, Blazik will face the catcher Christian Bethencourt. Curve is in there for strike one. A couple of ground balls to short for Bethencourt. And that's strike two as Blazik throwing the breaking ball, the curveball here, getting ahead of the Padres catcher. Yeah, most of the outs that he gets are on the on the curveball, the slider. Bethagor has been all over the fastball in this series. It might not be getting base hits, but every time he seems to get one close to the zone, he's taking a rip at it. A 
Ball two strikes. Yeah, Bethancourt is looking for his first hit in the series, but he uh, homered in consecutive games in Chicago. In fact, uh, had a solo shot that was the only run of the game Wednesday night. That one nothing win in the split doubleheader, and that time he goes around. So that's back to back strikeouts for Blazik, and now four straight for Brewers pitching. Yep, got him on the slider, just not able to wait back. I mean, he's thinking fastball every pitch up there, and yeah, the wrinkles been giving him a problem. Why throw him a fastball if he can't lay off of that? That's not even close to the strike zone. Two outs in the seventh inning. Here's the second baseman, Perella, and a swing and a miss. Perella made a nice play out at second, taking a hit away from Ramon Flores. Bottom of the sixth inning. Perella 0 for 2 tonight, a strikeout and a fly to center. Junior Guerra went the first six. Two hits, two walks, four strikeouts. Keeping the Padres off the scoreboard. There's a fastball at 95. Yeah, right on the edge. Uh, not much you can do with that pitch. Blazing looking for a 1 2 3 inning. Strikeouts of Melvin Upton and Christian Bethencourt. Morella's average sitting at 174 right now. And it will go up there as he gets one just under the glove of Chris Carter and into right field, a two out single. That fastball got too much of the plate. And these guys, these Padres, aren't going to let too many of those fastballs go by, these hittable pitches. And they've been struggling on the breaking ball. So if they get one close, they're going after it. That was up in the zone. He's able to. Get on top of it and rip it by Carter. So tying run at first base with two outs. Up next is Adam Rosales, who doubled the game's only extra base hit. Doubled to left in the fifth. Teams have combined for just seven hits, three for the Padres. Good pitching. Saw it last night, seeing it again here so far tonight. And that was fairly close over there. Is there keeping close eyes on Jose Perella? You might be thinking about stealing the base as you're working down in the bottom of the batting order. Pretty close, but he's able to get his hand in there. Rella has yet to attempt a steal. Modest lead, but he is on the move. Pitch is taken. Here's Lucroy's throw, and he is out at second. Lucroy strikes again. He does many things well, including throwing out base runners. 11 times he's done it already this year. The latest victim, of Jose Perella. As the shutout remains intact as we move to the seventh inning stretch one nothing Milwaukee.
Winning so far is held up here at Miller Park, and this Sunday afternoon, the Brewers will cap off the weekend with a double kids promotion. All kids 14 and under will eat free. Plus, they'll also get a Jonathan Lucroy replica jersey courtesy of Quick Trip. Couple changes here for San Diego. Will Myers in the game now. He'll handle things over at first base. A little shuffling going on here is familiar face to many Brewer fans. Carlos Villanueva now on for the Padres. Yeah, one of the uh, funny guys in all the baseball. That was Villanueva his time with the Brewers. Very popular amongst players and fans. And 14th appearance for Carlos. Earned run average over five. And not a bad job by Christian Friedrich tonight. It was good. Six innings, allowed four hits, just the one run. No control issues at times with six walks, but struck out four. As Brett Wallace as the shuffling gets caught up. He's over from one side of the infield to the other. He moves over from first to third. Ball two strikes to Domingo Santana. Getting things off at the bottom of the seventh inning. Also to complete the housekeeping out of Rosales over at second. So it gets caught up on what the Padres are doing defensively. Santana has reached all three times. Couple of singles as well as a walk. Is strike three called on Santana and out number one here in the seventh. Yeah, Carlos being a wave, a big arsenal of off speed pitches, change ups, curveball, sliders. Able to catch the inside corner with that fastball at 89, and he will rarely get much more than 90 miles an hour. Started has come out of the bullpen. Good long reliever. He's been roughed up in a couple of outings this season. Game in St. Louis, an inning and two thirds gave up four runs. Against the Mets, two innings gave up a couple. Here's Jonathan VR. A couple of walks, a sacrifice bunts for the Brewers shortstop. Bunt again, but pulls back, and the count is even. And it's just trying to get a sense for what Wallace is going to do if he shortens up a little bit. Just having a little fun with him. <laughs> Maybe pull him in a little bit and then slap one right by him. <laughs> and down the line and left, and it will slice foul. A ball, two strikes to Jonathan VR. It's tough to come by for both teams. The Brewers with four so far tonight. One, two. Villanueva, a couple of appearances for the crew in the postseason, that series against the Phillies in 2008. Pitched well. A couple outings there. VR with a base hit back up the middle. Hit number five tonight for the Brewers. Three of them. Or rather, the first for VR, who has reached for the third time tonight. A couple of walks, and now this base hit. Yeah, one for one. I mean, he's got a couple of walks, a sacrifice bunt, now base hit to center field. And and Carlos being away with hanging a slider and you know, VR able to bang it into center field. Well, you got some pretty good speed on the bases, and you figure you know, the way this is going in one to nothing game, you might see Via VR take off here. You got Via and VR. You got Via pitching <laughs> and VR v, VR at first. I'll get it right. <laughs> Smith and Jones. Yeah, come on. <laughs> VR leads the National League and steals. He has 11. 
Here's Ryan Braun over two with a walk against Carlos Villanueva. Twenty seven RBIs for Braun to go with his seven home runs, twelve game hitting streak. in 23 straight games trying to extend that hitting streak here if he can good cut but fouled it out of play that fastball up and in at 88 miles an hour and and Ryan a little bit late thirty two years old now Carlos Villanueva. And well aware of the threat that VR is on the basis. Well, if ever there's a night to manufacture a run, this is it, if possible. You don't get too cute with Ryan Braun at the plate, though. I mean, you're in scoring position already at first base when he's up. Yeah, another wrong with a two run big fly here. VR's on the move. Pitch is taken. There's the throw and out at second. Bethencourt throws out VR. Yeah, take a look at that one. And Craig Council's waiting for the word. Look at this throw from his knees right on the money. And I don't know. Hmm. It's going to be close, although. VR is uh, walking off. I'm not sure why. If he thinks he's safe, he's right away. He said he kind of pointed. You can see him, you know, little twitch, and this will be a pretty good look at it. Now, where does he tag him? Does he tag him up there? That is interesting. I mean, there's two spots where he could have tagged him up higher on the arm, and then down on the wrist was late. But did he get it? Get him above the wrist? And this will be reviewed. And why not? Pretty good uh, challenge for Craig Council. I mean, if you lose it, so what? And you might get a man in scoring position. Jeff Nelson is the crew chief. That was a heck of a throw, though, by Betancourt from his knees and a strike, a bullet to get, at this point, get VR at second base. Important to note that the call on the field is out, so we'll see if there's enough evidence. You may be hearing the crowd reaction as we play on the big board here. Hey, you know what the Brewers fans think it is. Does he get him there? If he does, then he might be out. If he doesn't, then he might, he's going to be safe. This effort right here, does he get him right there on the elbow? It's going to be close. I'm not sure there's enough to overturn it. And the guys in New York need a little time here. Gotta figure this out. It's a big moment. Yeah. A one run game. You get a runner in scoring position. Get the one out man at second or two outs, nobody on. It's a big deal. The R has been caught three times, four if this call remains. Been successful 11 times, best in the National League, and let's find out the verdict. We'll stay out. Not enough to overturn it. So the call stands out at second. Boy, you're right, as you said, though, that's a heck of a throw by Bethencourt. So the Brewers turn back in that challenge. Look at this. I mean that uh, the only chance he had was from his knees if he tries to get up it's going to be too late. Two minutes four seconds for the review. So base is empty a two and one count to Braun. Can't much argue that. Uh, I mean it really wasn't enough to really overturn it clear and convincing evidence otherwise.
Two and two the count to Ryan Braun. Struck him out swinging so Villanueva takes care of things in the seventh. We go to the eighth at Miller Park. It's still one nothing Brewers over the Padres. Is brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light pilsner. Cheers, it's Miller time. And by the Wisconsin Lottery, reminding you to please play responsibly. Let's get to today's game summary. Here's your one run so far. This sacrifice fly from Chris Carter. It scored Domingo Santana. It's been a pitcher's duel tonight. Christian Friedrich in his Padres debut. Six innings of four hit one run ball. But Junior Guerra has been a bit better. Six innings of two hit shutout baseball. Very economical needing 83 pitches. Three good starts. This one the best of the three for Junior Guerra. Now Tyler Thornburg is in for Milwaukee. Yeah, Thornburg pitched in last night's ball game, gave him a home run in an inning of work. I mean, look at the strikeout totals for Thornburg. 23 punch outs in 14 innings. And interesting note, he has struck out at least one batter in every inning he's pitched. Let's see if that can continue as he faces Adam Rosales to lead off the top of the eighth. Eight, nine, and one. That means Rosales, Will Myers, and John Jay. 1 0 pitch. And breaking ball has Rosales out in front, and that evens the count. Big hack. The uh, off speed stuff, the curveball slider, the split chains for Guerra has been very effective against this lineup. They love to attack that fastball. Of course, who doesn't? <laughs> Lays off that fastball, and it's one and two. Rock mentioned uh, Thornburg gave up a run last night in the uh, solo homer from Melvin Upton Jr. And the Angels last week here had success against him, but far more often than not, Thornburg has been just terrific in the role and trying to continue that here tonight. 2 2 pitch, and that is stung, but it's right there for Aaron Hill, and there's the first out of the inning. That ball was blistered at uh, Aaron Hill, played perfectly, and and Thornburg missed with the curveball, gave him a fastball, and he hit a rope. Sounded good right at him. Straight up with reason there defensively. Worked out perfectly. Here's Will Myers. Looks at the curve for strike one. See Myers last night had one of the seven hits for the Padres 
scored a run happening in the fourth inning of the series opener. A ball is strike Thornburg versus Myers. Junior Guerra the first six Blazik worked the seventh struck out a couple. And he's two and two to Myers is Tyler Thornburg. That strike three. Fastball gets him. Carved him up. He threw a fastball in on his hands that he swung through and then caught the outside corner with one. And well, you can't do it any better than that. Look at Thornburg able to catch that outside corner. Maybe a little bit off, but look good. Laz Diaz rings it up. Two men out with the bases empty in the eighth inning. Now John Jay at the top of the order. The fastball gets Thornburg ahead. Jay a third inning single to right. Started the game by reaching on an error. Mm. And Thornburg is not messing around. No he's not. He never does does he. I mean he doesn't really mess around with the strike zone. He throws strikes. He's confident in his stuff. Now bounce a curveball here. Time is called. Let's see if he can get Jay to chase. If it is a curveball coming. And he rounds to Aaron Hill, and it's a one, two, three inning. The bullpen work continues for the Brewers, as does a one run lead going to the bottom of the eighth. Welcome back to Miller Park. Always good. They're having fun. Brewers are out in front one to nothing. We're getting set for Brewers live post game report. Rock's going to join me on the set. Sophia's set for post game interviews. We'll get you set for game three. Padres and the Brewers. Milwaukee leading this one one nothing going to bat in the bottom of the eighth. Matt. All right Craig. Thank you very much. Yep. Iron Man Rock pregame game post game. Craig looks lonely out there. He does. He? Yep. He, he needs your company. It's a nice tie though. He is a sharp dressed Isn't man he though? always. It's it's been that way uh, from day one. Yeah. Right. I am a slob but I feel like more of one when I'm around <laughs> uh, Craig. <laughs> I was going to say I feel like a slobber. I feel like a slobber on anybody but especially Craig. 
<laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> You're funny. Yeah, last couple innings, I've finally loosened up. <laughs> <laughs> Only took a month. <laughs> oh, boy. That's good. <laughs> one and one to Lucroy. Yeah, there's a ground ball in the hole. Ramirez, tough play, no chance. Lucroy is on infield single here to start the bottom of the eighth. Well, hopefully that will get Luke going. Average dip and blow 300 for the first time in a while, and they lead off single. Put it in a pretty good spot. Yeah, he got Wallace didn't have a whole lot of range over there, but that'd be an impossible play for Alexi Ramirez, even as much range as he has. How sweet would it be if the Brewers can had this lead one run coming in the first inning on a Chris Carter sacrifice fly. What a big fly here. Hitless in his last 19 at bats but has the the sack fly that's the difference in the game right now. Second inning of work for Carlos Villanueva facing Carter here for the first time. And Carter looking for a mistake on that slider. Hang one up there. Give it a ride. Here's the one one. Takes a cut and does not get it. In a way, they got a couple of strikeouts in the seventh inning. Gave up a single to Jonathan VR, but he was thrown out trying to steal. Here's the one two. No scoring game, but that's how it so often works in Padres games this season. Got to outpitch him. What you got to do. So far, the Brewers have. As Villanueva bounces one up there, and it's a full count to Chris Carter. Crew time to even this series after San Diego got a shutout win last night. Recorded back to back shutouts. Beat the Cubs Wednesday night, the crew last night, and a one to nothing game here. At the moment, as Carter grounds to short, there's one and there is two. Six, four, three on the double play. Ramirez, Rosales to Myers. Yeah, nobody in the National League does that more often than the Padres. Lead the league in double plays. And got two tonight. Two men out, base is empty, and here is Aaron Hill. And as he settles in, trying to. See if they can bust one here as we look at the Powerball home run count. 39 of them this season for the Brewers. They went to hacking in Cincinnati. 11 of those 39 coming last weekend at Great American Ballpark. Aaron Hill had that three homer night on Saturday. Three homer, seven RBI night to get him where his stats are now at four long balls and 17 driven in. Got that one off the foot. One ball, one strike. Fascinating part about this game. Certain parts or certain pitching matchups, you can have slugfest, and now on consecutive nights with the Brewers, pitching duels. And Hill into left center field and a diving attempt. Jay can't get it. It's going to go to the wall. Hill digging around second and he'll stop there with a two out double. Yeah, I'm not sure that was the best play for John Jay right there. I mean, with two outs, nobody on, you play it safe. You give up the single, you don't want to give up the extra base hit. Now it gets by him and Aaron Hill able to get into scoring position now. John Jay doesn't make too many mistakes. That might have been one right there. Let's see if the Brewers can capitalize. 
Aaron Hill able to go down and get it. Two outs, nobody on, a one to nothing game, and you're better off just playing it safe, keeping the ball in front of you, and not allowing Hill to get into second, but the Brewers will take it. After 24 singles, Aaron Hill, who had the last extra base hit for the Brewers on Tuesday in the sixth inning with a double, that was a two run double. He ends the single streak with this double in the eighth. I wonder if they're going to, uh, you know, walk Jeanette intentionally. I mean, Jeanette got a couple of hits yesterday, and you got the youngster Ramon Flores on deck. We'll see what the Padres elect to do, but you know, first base open, Jeanette at the plate. They might walk him. Or then again, they might not. It's an option. Yeah, no, I was thinking that they would do that, but they will pitch to Scooter Jeanette. Scooter pinch hitting roll tonight. He was in the lineup last night, had a couple of hits in his first game back off the disabled list. A check swing and a foul ball. Always interesting, the strategy of the game. Every fan loves to play along. What do you do here? Do you pitch? Do you walk him? Andy Green says, go get him. Yeah, Andy Green big on the intentional walk. He walked Braun intentionally in the third inning. And he will trust his veteran Carlos Villanueva. 0-1 to Jeanette. Looks at strike two to Scooter. See those two hits last night, bumping his average to 277. 0 for 1 in a pinch hitting roll this season. Aaron Hill with a two out double. He's the runner at second. Two strike pitch to Jeanette. Seven hits for Milwaukee, just three for the Padres. The Brewers have stranded eight runners. The one-two. Blocked by Bethancourt. Yeah, normally say that being away, but you know, does his best work with the off-speed pitch, and you don't expect a lot of strikeouts with the fastball, but he struck out. Two Brewers in the seventh inning, both on fastball. Santana looking and Braun swinging, so you don't know. And you go up there against being away, but you're thinking off speed, and once in a while, he'll be able to get the fastball by you. The Brewers tonight an Ofer with runners in scoring position, 0 for 7. Jeanette will try to make it 1 for 8. Two balls, two strikes. Here it comes. And that is shot foul from Jeanette. Comes in with five RBIs, four homers. A single would be fine here. It's a chance to get Hill around. Be a critical second run. Yeah, preferably a single somewhere in the gap because you got some pretty good throwing arms in the outfield. 2 2 pitch. And that's strike three called. And Scooter knew it. So Villanueva gives up a two out double, but no damage done. And a one run lead. That means it's Jeremy Jeffers' time at Miller Park. 1 0 Brewers. We go to the night.
Wisconsin presented by Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. Spend the night with luxury. We move to the top of the ninth here at Miller Park. One nothing Brewers lead the Padres. The only run in the first inning of this game. Tomorrow MLB on FS1 is back with another doubleheader. Jose Altuve and the Astros taking on David Ortiz and the Red Sox. Then AL Central rivals collide with the Twins square off against the Indians. In a game you can only see on FS1. It all starts at 11.30 a.m. Central on FS1 or watch it live on Fox Sports Go. It's caught up a couple changes for the Brewers. Scooter Jeanette, pinch hitter in the bottom of the eighth, stays in the game at second. Aaron Hill moves from second to third. Moving to the mound, trying for his ninth save and as many chances as Jeremy Jeffers. Yeah, got a save last time out on Sunday, so it's been a while for Jeremy to get into a ball game. A scoreless inning, give up a hit, has been unscored upon in 12 of 14 appearances this year. He will face the two, three, and four hitters Ramirez, Kemp, and Wallace here in the ninth inning for San Diego. Padres have been shut out eight times this season. Jeffress trying to make it a ninth. 0 for 3 is Ramirez. He had a couple of hits last night. Drove in a run. And the count is 1 and 1 on the San Diego shortstop. A Chris Carter sacrifice fly in the first inning. That has been it to this point. And who would have thought, right? Uh, Brewers able to get on the board and you know, the Padres first run they'd given up in two nights three nights actually. And it's held up so far. And they came in with 23 straight scoreless innings. It's still been a very very stingy group. And there's a ground ball over to short that's Jonathan VR who bobbles it no play that'll be an E6. To begin the ninth. Mm. Boy, that's a bad way to start the inning. And now you got Matt Kemp walking up to the plate. Boy, that's about as routine as it gets. And rolls right up the glove and not able to get a handle on it. That'll be an E6. Couple of errors for the Brewers tonight. Including one to begin the game when John Jay reached on an error. Padres left a couple stranded in that inning. Here is Matt Kemp. He is lying to left. Fly ball to center. Struck out his last trip. Kemp hitless in the series. 0 for 4 last night. Eight homers. He has driven in 25 on the year. Here's the 1 0. Chopper foul. Well, you know, VR would like to get another two hopper right at him to turn a double play and atone for that error. Boy, one to nothing game, and you lead off the inning with an error. That's a, that's a killer. Putting the pressure on your pitcher. He is eight for eight in save opportunities as Jeremy Jeffress. Came into this season with one save in his career. Ready to bring the one one pitch to Matt Kemp. And another chance for VR. There's the flip for one. The turn to first, the double play. Yeah, there you go. Redemption. That's what this game's all about, right? He got his ground ball. Good pitch by Jeremy Jeffers. And that uh, two seam fastball. He's got that good movement on it and beats it right into the ground. Look at the movement on that pitch. And yeah, Matt Kemp, as soon as he makes contact, he knows that's a double play. Brewers turn it easily this time. Ask and you shall receive. And now two outs, base is empty for Brett Wallace. Good crowd at Miller Park. They've been entertained here tonight with some outstanding pitching. 
starting to come to their feet here looking for Jeffers to close this one out and a swing and a miss from Wallace for strike one. Junior Guerra with the first six Blazik and Thornburg the seventh and eighth. And now Jeffers here in the night thirty five thousand plus here at Miller Park. The 0 1. Make it 0 2. Let's check out Miller Lights. What's on tap? Game three tomorrow. Willie Peralta on the mound for the Brewers. It'll be a TBA for San Diego. Andrew Kachner on the DL. But Willie Peralta on the bump tomorrow, 5 30. Our coverage starts right here on Fox Sports Wisconsin. No balls, two strikes to Brett Wallace with the bases empty here in the ninth. Here it comes. Tried to check it, and he did. That's where you want that curveball with two strikes. Good try by Jeffers. Do it one more time. See what happens. Although he's been behind the fastball. Don't leave it up in the zone. Brett Wallace has home run power. Going deep a couple of times this season, but he does have it. Has that power in him? Jeffers will try to put him away. A ball, two strikes. A one-two. He struck him out swinging. Jeffers nine for nine, and the Brewers get a shutout over the San Diego Padres.